The Bronco Raptor is the world's first Ultra 4 Racing inspired production SUV and Ultra 4 Racing is intense. It's a combination of low speed technical rock crawling and high speed desert running, one of the most grueling forms of motorsports and as a result the Bronco Raptor is badass, capable of every terrain. It can slide, jump, wade through water, climb, descend and handle the potholes of Chicago. This thing can do everything. While the F-150 Raptor is now on its third generation with a supercharged V8 R variant coming, this is the first time the Raptor treatment has been offered on the Bronco, but it is an awesome setup and today we're going to review it. In terms of the powertrain, the Bronco Raptor gets a 3 liter EcoBoost V6 making 418 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque. It's a decent increase in power over the 2.7 liter EcoBoost found in the regular Bronco, but compared to something like the Wrangler 392, it's down quite a bit. That makes 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. But power is not the main goal and headline for the Bronco Raptor. It's the redesigned frame, chassis, suspension, the capability of this thing is truly remarkable. We have upgraded Dana axles. It is wider by a lot. The track width is 8.6 inches wider than the regular Bronco. Higher ground clearance. Minimum ground clearance is 13.1 inches for the Bronco Raptor, which is 4.8 inches more than the base Bronco. So all of that together with the very advanced suspension, which we'll talk about when we're in the vehicle driving, ensures that this thing is truly impressive. 10-speed automatic transmission, obviously 4x4 system, it does everything. In terms of exterior styling, the Bronco Raptor is huge. It is absolutely enormous. The first thing you notice when you walk up to it is again the scale, the height, the width. These fender flares are needed because like I said, the track width is so much wider and they got to cover these massive 37 inch tires. These are BF Goodrich KO2 all terrains, 37 inch, which is the largest tire offered on a production SUV. Even the regular F-150 Raptor, you have to upgrade from the 35s to these 37s. 17 inch beadlock capable wheel and then up front, you've got the steel bumper here with removable end caps for a better clearance. And the front grille gets the Raptor treatment, which means the blacked out Ford lettering. And you get amber running lights along with the triple signal lights here because it's so wide. Like it's as wide as like a Super Duty, which means from a legal requirement, you have to have these running lights here. And they've integrated it together to give it a really unique front fascia. Massive skid plate, all of that. Again, I just can't get over how tall and massive this is. We have functional fender vents here that are painted body color. There's been a lot of people complaining about the fender flares that they look like black plastic. From my understanding, it's because it's just cheaper to replace. You're going to damage these doing off-road shenanigans probably at some point. I don't mind it. I don't love it. The hood here is much more aggressive. Got this big bulge here with Raptor logo on it, a couple little Easter eggs, but it's functional. Extraction, graphics package. This one is finished in eruption green, which is an absolutely gorgeous color. But uh, if everything goes according to plan, we're going to get it pretty dirty, dirtier than it already is. So you won't see as much of that green paint. Bronco Raptors only come in four-door configuration with hardtop, so there's no two-door option. You have to get the four-door. Around back, you have the gigantic 37-inch spare. Just, it's huge, right? And it just dominates the tire rear end. Couple Bronco badges on it with the uh, the Raptor badge too. And then this is a fixed sidestep here, which you need unless you're seven feet tall, because it is a very tall vehicle to climb into. Take that off, you got a rock rail integrated there. It's very cold and snowy, so we're gonna get in the Raptor now. We're gonna take it for a drive. We'll talk about the interior, what it's like to drive, do a little bit of shenanigans and then talk about the value. All right, we're in the Bronco Raptor now. We're in off-road mode with the rear differential locked. Let's go up a big hill first. We'll talk about the interior, do some off-road shenanigans, get on the road and uh, just talk about what this thing is like. I mean, well, it's awesome. <laughs> it handles pretty much everything that I've so far thrown at it. It just does it with such ease. Up we go. 
not a problem. So there are seven different drive modes, everything from a tow haul mode where this thing is rated to tow 4,500 pounds to your normal to sport mode to a Baja mode, which is exclusive to this vehicle. There's rock crawling. There's a slippery mode, which I actually used when it was uh, wet and snowy out. <laughs> well, that's just fun. And then actually for now, we're up here just in this big dirt lot. Let's scroll over to sport mode. And when you change modes, the screen has this really cool animation sequence for every single different drive mode. The, the brown code that's rendered on there actually will change colors. It'll do some cool little animation. So that's awesome. We're in sport, sport mode now, which puts it in too high. And we're gonna go ahead and hold the traction button to turn advanced track off. Okay. For a little bit of shenanigans because we have a Bronco Raptor. A big chunk of open land. I'm gonna do a little bit of this. <laughs> and back through the water and mud. Whoop, I can't see anymore. There we go. <laughs> I've gotten this thing absolutely filthy. But that's what it's for. This is the Bronco Raptor. The functionality of this is absolutely undeniable. They designed this to really be able to do everything. So the suspension system, uh, a lot of acronyms, we've got the, it's called the Haas 4.0, high performance off-road stability suspension, 4.0 with Fox live valve dampers, which are 3.1 inch diameter, internal bypass, semi-active dampers. That, and then we have independent uh, suspension height monitors at each corner too, to just constantly update and adjust to ensure, oh, stop beeping at me. It's probably picking up all the mud that's all over this vehicle now. Yep, front parking sensors not available. Sensors blocked. Yeah, I'm sorry, I covered it in mud. We're on the road now so we can talk about the interior of the Bronco Raptor. It has some pretty good technology and nice creature comforts. So I mentioned those really awesome animations when you change your drive modes in this full digital cluster. The regular Broncos came out with a smaller digital screen, but on the Raptor, it's a full 12 inch digital cluster. Really awesome uh, visuals and different animations when you're changing modes, a lot of information too. We can go to a like Raptor information menu, which pulls up all sorts of things like off-road status, your pitch angle, and different uh, temperatures and measurements and things like that, different gauges that you would want to see. So that's really awesome. And then in the middle, we have a Sync 4 12 inch infotainment screen, which has wireless CarPlay, which is what I'm running right now, but CarPlay doesn't take up the entire screen. There's still this little right segment here, like a panel where you can pull through things like navigation, your trip computer, pitch and roll information. So it's a really nicely integrated system and the tech and all the screens here are really nice in the Bronco Raptor. Other creature comforts, we have some of the best heated seats that I've experienced. They get really nice and warm, which is very welcome in our 23 degree freezing cold day. The steering wheel is also different. It's a lot thicker, chunkier with two fixed metal paddle shifters that are made of magnesium. Uh, nice buttons on here. So we've got four different buttons for controlling your exhaust sound, your suspension mode, your steering mode, and there's an R button, which is like a reconfigurable my mode for you to set it up how you want. You can also obviously have the go over any terrain rotary shifter here, which is not for transmission. It's for your drive modes. Go over any terrain those seven different drive modes and within that we have the 4x4 system controls and you'll notice a lot of code orange accents it's kind of the Raptor signature now now everything from the stitching to the 12 o'clock marker on the steering wheel to the lettering across the dash there for the Bronco to air vent controls to the that rotary uh, mode selector here so the orange accents kind of tie this together on the interior as a Bronco Raptor the seats also have a bit more bolstering they're a nice mix of like suede and leather with the Raptor lettering there they, they hold you a nice they're pretty comfortable. This is a Bronco, so the roof will come off, the doors will come off, they're frameless so the windows can descend and you can put them in the back. And because of that, there is gonna be some wind noise, road noise on the inside. It's not terrible, but it's also not great. This thing also has the aerodynamic properties of a brick and massive 37 inch tires. So yeah, it is pretty noisy. I'm doing 64 miles an hour right now in ninth gear. And there's a pretty substantial amount of wind noise, but in terms of tying together the interior, is it nice? Absolutely, I think it checks a lot of the boxes. It's rugged, it's uh, pretty spacious and comfortable. It's, it's cool, there's a couple Raptor touches inside here and the tech is very well integrated. 
Now, what is this thing like to drive on-road and a little bit off-road? So the off-road aspect, we touched upon the technical aspects of the suspension and told you about the upgraded axles, upgraded 4x4. It's got the skid plates, the massive 37-inch tires, disconnectable sway bar, 13 inches of front suspension travel, 14 inches out back, 4.8 inches more ground clearance compared to a base Bronco, not the Sasquatch, the base base Bronco, but this is more capable than a Sasquatch 2, obviously, and also better than a loaded up Wrangler Rubicon in terms of departure angles, all those stats, right? To me, the best thing is it makes it feel easy. You just drive where you want to drive, whether you're on-road or off-road. When you're on-road, you kind of want to go drive over things. I'll be honest, I was driving over random curbs and parking lots just because I could, leaving work. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go that way over the grass. It gives you that level of confidence where you're just like, I can do whatever I want. I can just drive. If I want to just turn right and go that way, sure, we can do it, which is a lot of fun. Now, am I getting to exploit the full potential of the Bronco Raptor right now? No, we did a little bit of off-roading, I guess, getting it a bit dirty, got some awesome action shots, let it around a little bit, right? To really get to the true potential of the Bronco Raptor, you gotta go to a serious off-road course or through the desert, do some technical rock climbing. It has all of the hardware and tech to allow you to conquer all terrains. This is one of the most capable off-road vehicles you can buy from the factory right now. More than a Sasquatch pack, Bronco obviously, more than top tier Wrangler Rubicons. This thing is just badass. On the road in sport mode, the 10-speed automatic gives some pretty quick shifts. You can go between the four-wheel drive systems. Like it does a bit of everything. So with that, let's uh, transition into talking about the value. Base price of a Bronco Raptor is just under 70 grand. It's like 68,000 something. As option, this one is 75K because it does not have the Lux pack, which brings uh, b and sound system, adaptive cruise control. This does still have the 360 overview camera, which is nice. So you can option a Lux pack, a couple more things to about 80 grand. The problem is there's markup in the market demand. If you go on Ford website for the Bronco Raptor, it says like sold out for the first model year. They're gone. The demand, because people know this thing is so badass and so cool, the demand went through the roof. So they're sold out for the first model year and therefore the market value is quite high. I've seen markup of these as high as 120 to $140,000. And that's a lot. Would I spend 140K on this? No, I don't think so. I'll be fully honest. I don't think it's a 140K experience. 80K? Absolutely. This thing is pretty epic. My uh, videographer, video editor, Elia, he loves it. I'm willing to bet. We'll get him one of those at some point. He is now obsessed with the Bronco Raptor. And at 80K, I think this is pretty phenomenal, especially if you look at how much a Wrangler 392 costs, the performance, the capability, the well-roundedness. That's not even a word, but well-roundedness of this, the flexibility, doors off, roof off. It does it all. So from that regard, I think an MSRP, epic value only complaint is the sound so i'm actually in baja exhaust mode sound which is the loudest now your quiet normal sport so we go into sport it's all right when you go into baja it just gets louder of the same i don't love it i just don't love it <laughs> ellie had described it as a restricted trombone or like a sad trombone Compare it to something like the Wrangler 392, it is pit pitiful in terms of exhaust sound. So that's that's a downside. It's just kind of a droney noise. So I don't love that, but everything else about this thing is fantastic. Now, if you're trying to compare this versus a regular Bronco versus call it an F-150 Raptor, Versus a regular Bronco, I think it's better in every single way. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, which may be inconvenient if you're in a big city or trying to park it in a garage. I don't think this will fit in my garage, but honestly, on-road behavior, comfort, steering, I think it's better than a regular Bronco and for sure way more capable. Compared to an F-150 Raptor, the F-150 is longer, even bigger, um, more comfortable in terms of the luxury touches. It's much more isolated because it's a, it's a truck. It's an F-150, so don't get as much of the wind noise. This, I think, is a more fun toy to daily drive. F-150 better on road. And we're not even talking about the Raptor R F-150 because that's going to have a supercharged V8 with like 700 horsepower. So that is going to be a next level ridiculousness. But if you want just a well-rounded, all around daily driver that you can go off-road something like this i i would highly recommend it i've i've really really 
really fall in love with this thing. It's a lot of fun. It'd be cool to daily one of these around here, actually. So there's my, my review of the Bronco Raptor. Did a little bit of off-roading, had some fun day-to-day -day driving. Also have a living with vlog where more informal behind the scenes showing the day-to-day, -day, taking it out, uh, some of the more details, some of the Easter eggs on this Bronco Raptor. It's been fun. I am happy Ford applied the Raptor treatment. It was inevitable. It makes absolute perfect sense for them to do it to the Bronco. This thing is one of the coolest off-road focused vehicles that I have gotten to experience. And it's not compromised on road. It's actually pretty awesome. With that, hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.